continuing with our comparisons of gravitation versus electricity equations, we will look at a couple of laws which, again, you must memorize. The first is Coulomb's law. And in Coulomb's law, we have the force in an electric field is equal to K Q1 Q2 over R squared. K is Coulomb's constant. Q1, Q2 are the two point charges involved. R is the distance between the point charges. Be very careful on the exam. They will provide you with extra information that you do not require to solve a problem. You can bet they're going to provide you with information such as the radius of something. But this has nothing to do with the radius of anything. This happens to be the distance between the two point charges. In gravitation, the relevant equation is Newton's law of gravity. And it is that the force in the gravitational field is given by G, which is the gravitational constant, M1, M2, the two masses involved, and R, which is the distance between the center of mass of the two masses. Again, it has nothing to do with the radius. So notice how these two equations are remarkably similar. Both of them include the constants. Now realize that from what we mentioned about earlier, about how the forces of nuclear forces, electrical forces, gravitational forces are so different, clearly the constant for electricity would be a much greater number than the constant for gravitation, which is a much weaker force. Also, in terms of the exam, you don't have to worry about memorizing the constants K or G. They would be provided in the exam itself. But the structure of the equation is very important. They would rarely ask you to actually calculate something based on this, but a very common type of question would be to say something of the order of, if you have an electric field, and there is a force in the electric field, what happens to the force if you double one of the charges? Well, if you double one of the charges, you would double the force because it's a direct relationship. Other typical questions is, what would happen to the force if you doubled the distance between the point charges or between the masses? It would be the same thing. It's an inverse square relationship. If you double the distance, 2 times r, then the 2 is squared, it creates 4. So if you double the distance, then the force will be 1 quarter. If you triple the distance, the force would be 1 ninth, which is 3 squared. So those would be typical manipulations that they would ask at exam. Now, let's talk about work. We're going to talk about work in much more detail later in this series. But just in general, you could remember work as being force times distance. That's a very loose description of work, but it's comfortable for what we need to deal with now. And we'll talk about it in more detail later. So work is force times distance. So let us look at what the work is done in an electric field. Well, let's look at an electric field. First, I will draw some electric field lines. Here are some electric field lines. The understanding is that electric field lines are always drawn away from a positive charge. That's the standard. So it's as if there was a positive charge higher up, and therefore these this is being drawn away from the positive charge. Clearly, if you were to put a negative charge here, because the positive charge must be up there, if you put a negative charge here, then that negative charge would be attracted to the positive charge, because opposites attract, and it would move in that direction. But let's imagine that we put a positive charge here, so positive Q. Well like charges would repel and this positive charge would be pushed away. But we want to push this charge towards the positive charge. We want to move it in this direction. If we move it in this direction, that will require work. 
That would require a force to push it in the opposite direction of the electric field. If we were to push this charge a distance delta y, then we can calculate the work done. Work being force times distance, and the force we saw earlier in electric field is QE. So work is force times distance delta y. So the work in an electric field is given by QE delta y. To be more precise, the QE is the absolute value. In other words, it doesn't matter what the charge is on the Q, whether it's positive or negative, if you are pushing it against the field, whatever the field may be, and you are doing work, work is given by the force times the distance. Well, let's look at what the work would be in a gravitation field. So in a gravitation field, let's imagine that we have an object. Here's our object, and it's on this surface. And this object is brought a distance delta y. Just very, 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 very slowly, it's brought a distance delta y against the gravitation field. Because imagine, gravity is working this way. Gravity is going to be pushing things down towards the center of the Earth. So we are taking an object and we are bringing it up. That's against the field. It's equivalent to moving the positive charge against an electric field. So as we're moving this this way, we have work is equal to force times distance. The force, we said earlier, equivalent to QE, is mg. Of course, we'll be seeing a little later what we usually, the, the word we usually use for this is simply the weight of the object. So we have mg, and it's moving a distance delta y. So there we have work is force times distance. So now we've compared the equations for electricity and gravitation. All these equations must be memorized. Most importantly, you should understand any derivations that we've done. And to imagine, as I've mentioned, the different ways that these equations can be used.